Jensen, live on 93.3 KTSR. Second year in a row, and just the backstory a little, uh, this South by Southwest, it looked for a couple weeks like really slim pickings, and I was having trouble coming up, and Emily and I were having trouble coming up with things that would fill this room. And I knew Hanson would, they did last year, and they were gracious enough, they were playing one other South by Southwest appearance, they were gracious enough to step in, and then we built some other stuff around it, and it's all worked out terrific. But the thing that people, of all these bands, and a lot of them have current radio hits, the band that more people have said to me, can I come on Friday morning? Well, <laughs> it's, we've discussed this a million times, right. but this is a phenomena that never stopped, that doesn't have the radio play, doesn't have sort of that sexy paparazzi sheen that was around it at the beginning, and yet you continue to play packed rooms to tour to bigger and bigger audiences, and they're not just 40-year-olds, they're mostly in their 20s. <laughs> well, what's, nothing wrong with 40-year-olds, you know. No, 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 no. <laughs> but, but you walk into these rooms, I went to see the Medimos yeah. last year, and they're all 18 to 26. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We, we, There's we, a question there somewhere. We don't but, think about it that way. I mean, also, oh, first okay. of all, we've been able to be friends here for a few years, and we've hung and done this off by crazy, right, and talked to, have talked about this. Um, ultimately, um, it is actually, here's a concept, hmm, it's about music. <laughs> There's a thought. Uh, can, please applaud that. <laughs> this is, honestly, the music business and the, and the record business and rock and roll sort of killed itself over the last 50 years because they told everybody it was about sex and drugs and rock and roll was the third thing on the list, right? <laughs> really. And we're watching a cultural phenomenon, I think, where people are like, you know what? That's kind of a bad plan, you know? And, and for us, we, we love the adventure, we love the journey. This song is a song we wrote on the side of the road at Joshua Tree in 2010 on a thing where we stopped in locations, we were live streaming to the fans. In that moment, we wrote a song live on the road, and it's about that journey. Like, it is about the journey, not the destination. And, and so, then we recorded it in West Texas with some good old West Texas. That's right. <laughs> so it's about music. It's about connection. Yeah, and keeping that connection and engaging the the audience, yeah. that's become more about, or more than just about the show. That's yeah. a full-time thing, and you guys really enjoy that and embrace that. Well, one of the things, like for example, the song we just played is a song called Along the Road, as Taylor mentioned, and, it, and it's actually a really good example of kind of a microcosm of our world, which is every single year, no matter what's going on, we make EPs for our uh, Hanson.net fan club community, which Anybody is Hanson online. Anybody Hanson.net here? Oh, <laughs> so, and basically what we do is we just, we just get in the studio for a week and we just say, all right, no rules, just right, for lack of a better way to say it, and we and we crank it out and we have a great time being creative for the sake of the music itself. And I think that that is kind of an example of the ethos of how we've approached the entirety of our lives and our career as a whole. It's just, hey, it's about the connection, it's the honest connection, it's keeping that connection going over and over and over again. And when you keep making music, you have lots of opportunities to connect with people a lot along the way. You know, you connect with somebody 10 years into your career or in the first year of your career or in the 25th year of your career. And either way, there's a lot of music along the way for them to find and, and find interesting. So. You're also products of Tulsa and real champions for the, <laughs> right. for the town. Uh, you have your beer festival there. Um, you, you bring people there year round for various things and for songwriting camps. Right. Um, they have a presence here at South By. You played for them last yeah. year. Uh, it seems close enough that we should be there more often. What are we missing in Tulsa right now? Well, I mean, by not going. I will say this: T Tulsa is a great place, but um, I, <coughs> Tulsa is our home, right? And just like a lot of people, Austin is their home. And I think loving Tulsa is not so much about saying, "Look at these great things on the menu that are so perfect." It's about being from somewhere, right? It's about you know you love your family because they're your family. You didn't necessarily pick them, but you love what's right and what's wrong, right? And I think our decision to be in Tulsa is less about this perfect place, because there's a lot of problems with that city, just like every city, but the decision to be a part of making something better, be a part of celebrating what is great, 
um, and being known for doing that. You know, we, we saw, we started our own record company 15 years ago now after having you know, some success and saying we're gonna invest in ourselves. And we set up offices in New York and we've done that. We've always done New York, LA, Nashville, like everybody. But we said, you know, we wanna have an address. We wanna pay our taxes. We wanna build something that is gonna leave something bigger than us as we go forward. And so there we have our merchandise, our e-commerce, our fan club. We do an annual event uh, that brings fans from all over the world beer festival, but I think the takeaway would be wherever you are, you should be there loudly. You know, you should be a part of it and you should have that ripple go out. Right? And stand there like you're a champion of Austin. I mean, you know, you, you walk down the street and I, you know, you're, you know where the, you know, where the dead bodies are probably. It's, it's, a, very, you know, <laughs> it's a very American thing, I think. Yeah. Be who you are very loudly yeah. from where you're from. You know? <laughs> and be kind, but, but do that with, I mean, the, there's a sense of responsibility. And it's so, you know, we've taken the time to be a part of the Academy, the Grammy community as well. I'm here in the Texas chapter on the Board of Governors. It's, it's a volunteer time, you're getting your time to serve. And I think a lot of us, you know, I talked to Mike Viola, who's just a brilliant artist and friend, who said, you know, I, he said, I realized a, a couple years ago that I needed to embrace the fact that I am now the teacher, not just the student. I have things to give back. And I think everybody in our life cycle, um, we, we have different jobs at different points. And I think we've realized that we have um, something to give being in Tulsa, and we also have something to share with our community of fans and friends and people that are artists to say, you know, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, there's a ripple when you do it well and when you do it with passion. And you may not even know the impact of that until after you've done it. But uh, don't be afraid to show up and, and bring your best. And that's really our whole reason for bringing things in house. You know, it's just to have the ability to navigate and make those decisions. Well, thank you again for showing up this morning. <laughs> for the second year in a row,